Everybody, I am so excited because we are here with Cindy McCashin. Behind me, you're going to see her artwork, and this is a small selection. She's been doing art for a while, but I'll let her tell you all about it. Um, we are right now at Goodwill Goods at The Makers, and I've known Cindy a little while. In fact, I own some of her artwork. So, Cindy, thank you so much for doing oh, this. I really you, appreciate sweetie. it. <laughs> I have a list of questions. <gasps> it was a test. <laughs> That's it. This is... I, I, didn't, I didn't complete my homework, but we'll do okay. That's a, well, these are easy. I'll I think you'll answer it. them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, um, first of all, your art is absolutely fantastic. Well, I own some you. of it. I know you do. Yeah. Bless your heart. I've got quite a few pieces, actually. You, you, I have a piece of yours in my dressing room in what we call the fireplace room because nobody knows the difference between family room and living room, so I call it the fireplace room. Great <laughs> in the room. family room, yes. <laughs> and, um, and I just love it, and I've watched you try different mediums and stuff and over the years. progress, hopefully. Unbelievable. Over it's, the years. <laughs> it's fantastic. So... Uh, my first question, yes, I'm referring to the list. Tell us a little about yourself. Introduce yourself. Well, basically I'm an Air Force brat. I grew up, I think I've lived in maybe seven states, wow. three foreign countries, as, as, a, as a developing young girl and teenager, so my formative years, as they say. And my parents were all into the cultures of the different countries. We traveled a lot. So some of my art is influenced by that. But basically I just got kind of <clears throat> a, just a love for the different cultures, the whole world. How could you and not without how could traveling you not? and meeting yeah. that many people? Yeah. That's wonderful. <laughs> and met all kinds of people. But all through, I never studied art because I, I think it was my fourth grade teacher that told me one time that I could not draw. So I did not draw. So I started playing the clarinet instead. <laughs> and Which you can play. Today, to, to this day, yes, I play clarinet. I majored in music for a while, graduated with a BS in early childhood education, which I've never used. But I've always... That's good because I'm very immature. Yeah, yeah. It came in really handy in some of my jobs over the years. Yes, right. <laughs> yes I majored in kindergarten. Thank you very much. <laughs> but, um, uh, so, and I did music all the way through school, and I still play. I'm a member of a community concert band, which, which is art, though, right? Oh, I, mean, I love so it. And I'm so excited. We're going to try to get back together this fall after all this COVID tell, nonsense. Tell but, everybody what. <laughs> Who you play with? Oh, well, it is the Mid-South Symphonic Band, and it, it consists of 60-something um, people from college age up through old retired people like me, and it's just, you know, if you ever went to a high school or college band concert, well, that's us. And we, Very just, enjoyable. we just play a variety of music. And yeah, we love it, so I can't wait to get back to that. But in the meantime, thank goodness for art, because I've been able to, well, not paint as much as I should have. I, you know, it comes in spurts. <laughs> but I just, I, some of my friends opened up one of those paint and sip, yes. you know, drink wine and try not to dip your paintbrush into the wine instead of the water. Although well, if you do, if you've had enough wine, you don't care. Acrylic is non-toxic, so it's really okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I've done that. <laughs> and uh, they had, you know, little instructors from UTC and various places come and, and teach, you know, little sessions on let's paint, let's all paint this water scene or something. Did you surprise yourself and find well, out? Well, I went to support my friends in their new business. And after about seven or eight times, well, I enjoyed it from the beginning. But, you know, seven or eight times later, I thought, you know, I wonder if I could do this on my own. So that's the story. I just started doing it, and I 
I amazed myself. Yeah, so, like, well, and as you can see, she she can do it by herself. Maybe I can draw. I don't, <laughs> I don't draw so much as I sketch, and then I don't draw very well, but I like pastels. <laughs> but I want to backtrack to something you said a moment okay. ago because I had a similar situation. Um, Tom had a similar situation. Who, when a teacher or someone in your life tells you that you can't do something. Oh. You obviously are very successful. So Tom ended up being an international award winner three times. Yeah. I support artists all over the place. And I've heard so many stories, it almost makes me want to cry when people are told, Oh, you can't you do can't that. Do this. And then and so they don't. So true. <laughs> yeah. Right? And so I, I would really want to this this is just uh, an interjection here, but I really want to say if anybody has been told you can't. Just do it if you want to. Yes. I, I just I just wanted to try it. Right. And and it's it, you don't know what you can do until you try. So right. I belong to a couple of local art groups, the Regional Art Alliance and the Civic Arts League of Chattanooga. And part of our mission for both of those clubs and just us as artists in general is to encourage beginning artists right. you know, just do it right and as one as my good friend if it told brings me you once, joy do it i was freaking out about uh doing a watercolor of something she's like it's just paper yes. and she's right it's just paper that's right that's right and it's just paint <laughs> yes and it's just paint that's right that's right it's watercolor not... is a little less forgiving than acrylics so i do mostly acrylics but i've been doing watercolors for a few years. I basically started painting about when I was ready to retire. So it gives me something to do in my dotage, as they say. Something else I <laughs> wanted to bring up. I met Cindy shortly after she had first started painting at our other store before we moved. And almost immediately, she won an award. I know, that was crazy. But <laughs> Just started painting, so that must have been a nice boost. Tell us. Oh, it was. And it's like, well, maybe I can do this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was an, an exhibit down at a place that doesn't exist anymore, the Chattanooga Workshop right. uh, Artist Studios. Had a show for the Regional Art Alliance that I'm a member of. And one of my little paintings won the first prize, and I was just flabbergasted. Maybe but, I'm going to keep doing very this. Encouraged. <laughs> and speaking of encouragement, this lady right here is one of the main reasons that I paint today. Aww. You and one other local artist just encouraged me to just do it. Absolutely. You know, and you you Aww. accepted a couple of pieces of my art and put them in your shop and you know, it's it's been a an education, a self education. So I make a lot of mistakes, but you can just always cover it up. Uh, an old friend of mine who is a very successful artist and a great artist always said sometimes they're happy mistakes. Because if you just go with it, like, you're surprised. Oh, that wow. lake looks great there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I, I also like <laughs> Cindy again. Thank you so much for oh, doing this. Thank you. Um, I'm referring to the list. My test. And you're <laughs> <laughs> um, who are your biggest influences? Well, if you have any. I, I, I had, there are so many styles of art that I like. As I may or may not have mentioned earlier, I've always collected art and love going to art galleries and just drooling on things. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, not thinking that I could ever do that. Yeah. I, I just admired other people's work. I like to paint landscapes, so I'm kind of, enamored of the uh, Hudson River School of mm -hmm. Landscape Artists, which started somewhere in the 1800s, 1825 or something. And that, you know that went on for several years because I like the, I, I just like landscapes. Right. I'm fascinated by trees and cloud formations and all the different shades of green and you know i love and landscapes my very favorite artist is an american artist edward hopper yes he is just his use fred of, is over there <laughs> saying, yeah, uh -huh. one of, that's Yay, one of Brad's <laughs> yeah i just the subject matter that he paints 
for, for those of you who don't know, his most famous painting is probably the Nighthawks, which is yeah. that picture of that diner at night with just a couple of people in there. But he also, he does people very well, and I'm not so good at people. I try sometimes, but just I'm intrigued by the light and the shadow so in his paintings, and they're so simple, but they just draw you in because they're, well, like I said, the, how the light hits things. Right, and right. He just fascinates me. I love which that. I'm going to point out, which it's right behind you, so it's going to be easy. <laughs> Cindy brought this in <laughs> recently, uh, The Two Canoes. It's very simple, and it is one of my favorites. One, I love the triangle, that break in light right there, but I can almost see the hopper influence. Even though there's no people there or anything, the, the coloring and stuff that you have in well, that one, I can almost see you. it. But, <laughs> but um, That's a compliment. Hopefully, <laughs> you can see behind me some of her paintings, and I'll try and give some close-ups later. But yeah, And of course, there are a lot of local artists in the two clubs that I belong to, and just what I see online... I, that's why I stay up till four o'clock in the morning because, <laughs> <laughs> well, A, I'm looking at art and B, I'm looking at cats. <laughs> you should paint more cats. <laughs> I, have, I have painted some cats. <laughs> that's a great one. The only animals I've ever tried to paint are cats. But um, I won't mention any names of local artists other than Victoria York, of course. But we'll because be I might leave some somebody out, then I'd feel terrible. <laughs> but they have encouraged me, and some of them, like myself, didn't start painting until, oh, you know, five or six years ago. Yeah. I didn't didn't know they could. I will say, if anybody is watching that is not from the Chattanooga area, um, what a great group of artists oh. that are here. I mean, of all types, everything from the pottery to the canvas art to fabric arts. Mm -hmm. I mean, and they're a great supportive group. Oh, they are. Yeah. We yes. all we all just love, like, we just support each other's work. And I still buy other people's work. Sure. I like to say, as I've told you before, that my walls are full of OPA, other people's art. <laughs> yes. So I don't have that many of my own hanging because it's, my walls are filled up with art from friends and people I don't even know. But, but Isn't I that just, wonderful, though? Yeah. It's, I, I love when something brings me joy like that. Mm -hmm. And you walk by, you're walking on your way to get coffee in the morning it's and like, you see it. I just, must have it. It's just yeah. uplifting. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, when you were painting, I have two, this is going to be a two-part question. Oh, I'll try to, I'll try to remember this is, this is, it's complex. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a ritual when you paint, a routine, um, and do you ever work on more than one painting at a time? I don't really have a ritual. I, I build an image in my mind. I paint from photographs a lot, mine and others that, have, that I have permission to use. Um, they, the finished image rarely turns out looking like the photograph, but you know, I put my own spin on it. Exactly, yeah. Sometimes intentionally, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> accidentally. Like, Happy oh, accidents. I can't paint that, I'm gonna leave that out. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, I'll generally, whether it's watercolor, paper, or a canvas, I generally do a sketch at least of where the, where the large images are gonna go. And then I just start putting in big blocks of color with acrylics, with watercolor, I don't, I don't know, you just start painting. But <laughs> most of my watercolors are kind of small, like four by four, or eight by 10, or, but uh, on a large acrylic, I'll just do a basic sketch, okay. and then just start painting and see what happens. <laughs> okay, this is a big question. What was the other half of your question? Oh, do you ever, oh, that's right, thank you. Oh. Do you ever work on multiple paintings at a time? Not. Not a lot. Uh, I generally just get on a mission. <laughs> I have to finish this. <laughs> but, okay, I'm going to jump ahead then. How do you know when a painting is finished? Well, you know when you think it's finished. And then you take it off the easel and you go <laughs> and sit it underneath your television in the living room. And while you're during the commercials, you stare at it for a few hours, few days, whatever, 
until something starts bothering you. Like maybe that cloud looks a little too much like a teapot yeah. and I have to go fix it. Or, or that there's an empty space there. It right. needs something. So, and then finally you just say, okay, that's enough. Step away from the canvas. You're going to mess it up. I have been known to overwork <laughs> something and have to kind of start over yeah. on the flower. So it's just, I don't know, when, um, just mess with it until I can't see anything glaringly wrong with it. <laughs> There's, you mentioned that you paint from photographs and stuff. I have I seen on your pages where you go for rides and I do the same thing and you take pictures of, like <laughs> I love landscapes too and I'll mm -hmm. snap pictures of barns or uh, houses, a tree that's cool just houses. lit up. Yeah. Yes. Or just the light on something. And it goes yes. into my someday <laughs> if pile. If you get in the car with me and you'd be okay with it, but all my family and friends know when they get in the car with me, we're likely to stop about six times oh, like, please. or turn back, ooh, barn. Between <laughs> curb shopping and window shopping for paintings, I, I'm not sure I ever get over 25 miles an hour. So I love yeah. to just go out in the country and get lost and yes. you know, have, have a GPS in the back seat just in case I need it. <laughs> Start getting, oh, let's see where that goes. Yeah. I think I inherited my Air Force pilot daddy's sense of direction, so okay, I rarely am completely lost, <laughs> but yeah, there's always even the traveling the same roads over and over again the the trees are different the lights different on that's something why I, I love landscapes yeah i tell people I, I know this isn't about me but i tell people but it is about you <laughs> i could paint the same tree every day mm -hmm. and you will end up with three different paintings yeah. four different paintings because the lighting the mm -hmm. mood the mood you're in right right it changes the painting the 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 lighting, mm -hmm. the, the clouds shadows. that day, the shaft light and shadow. I, I do love. struggle with shadows. That's my, that's my next goal is to figure out how to, to challenge myself painting things that have heavy shadows in them and figure out how to do that. Uh, well, you do create a lot of beautiful dimension in your work. Well, thank so. you. Um, let's see. This is probably going to be the last question. And... Is there, a, okay, if I'm going to go two more questions. Okay. You're um, <laughs> we could tell, I'm a real pro here. She um, is. Is there a wish list? Do you have something that you, you're telling yourself, I'm going to paint that someday? Well, I love to travel. And having been exposed to, well, I'll just tell you, I lived in, when I was very young, Germany and France, and of course, we traveled all over Europe on my dad's vacations, his military, nice three week long vacations. Yeah. And then I lived in Japan when I was in high school. So I'm, and those are two very different cultures and different architectural styles. I guess very I different. just have a dream of being able to travel again, especially around Europe, and just probably take 4,000 pictures and come home and. <laughs> And paint some going on, on a, a barge through the canals in France would just oh. be my my ultimate <laughs> my ultimate bucket list. And you just know, gee, what a small dream! You know, just you know, <laughs> think big, yeah, <laughs> paint small. No. So and just learn, keeping continuing to learn. Yeah, yeah. I haven't taken that many classes or workshops because. I've had, I, I taught myself. I don't know what I'm doing half the time. I'm just doing it. And I'm all, I've been afraid that somebody would say, oh, that's not how you do that. But I, in the couple of workshops that I have taken, I've learned, even if I just learn one technique, it's worth it. Right. You know. right. So. Absolutely, I support taking classes. But mm -hmm. on the other side, I have seen paintings that are so fabulous, they're too contrived. And yes. so I respect a lot of self-taught artists because a lot of times you actually see their emotion and thoughts on the painting, mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. If that makes sense to and people. And I'm not a fan of, uh, say, uber realism. If I have to squint at something and try to figure out if it's a photograph or a painting, I'm like, no, I want it to look like to look painterly. I'm, I that's truly the word, I feel like when I'm buying a piece of art from someone, whether it be canvas work, metal, anything, I, I really do feel like I'm buying a piece of them. Like I want to see right. 
what they see, mm -hmm. right? And if I, it's a picture, then I can take a picture. There's we have amazing photography. I love yes, photographs, but then you buy too. a photograph. I know. I, I I'm an amateur photographer and have been ever since high school. Because my dad was a well, he at one time a professional portrait photographer. So he he taught me all about cameras, and I took a little bit of photography in college. Not that it stuck, but I'm a I'm an avid picture taker. <laughs> so uh, okay, you have taught us that basically. Art has run through your blood your whole life between photography and music and paintings and uh, appreciating landscapes. You've and kind I just of didn't realize that, that I had it in me to just do, just do it. You know. <laughs> Cindy, do you have anything you want to wrap with? Well, I just want to say that this gallery is so much more than these paintings that you see behind me. Uh -huh. There is painted furniture, the most gorgeous photography, jewelry, just every time I come in here it's all I can do not to leave with an armful of stuff and I generally don't <laughs> but <laughs> Victoria herself makes jewelry so there's so much in here that with Mother's Day coming up especially that you can buy something in here for ten dollars and you can buy something in here for nearly a thousand dollars. I mean, it just there's there's just so much in here. It's just such a, a fun place. Thank you for that. We actually yeah. work really hard at taking pomposity out of it. If oh, that, it is. You know what I'm you, saying? It is when the everybody least just pompous place I have ever been. That's. <laughs> <laughs> and that, and with that, that <laughs> on that note, and no. with that, Cindy, I love you so much. I Thank love you, you too, Victoria. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, you need to get to see Cindy's work. She is, as you can see, she's as beautiful a soul as she does paint beautifully. Being and crazy helps. So, <laughs> thank you very much, <laughs> thank everyone. You.